Well, 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 hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar about Live IT Sourcing Lab, where we will dig deeper into your vacancies actually, uh, which you sent me and uh, I will try to show you maybe how I would progress uh, in a different sourcing scenarios. Uh, just uh, for the beginning, um, I am a little bit glimpsing here to the left from my side because uh, I see your comments here whenever you watch it. If you are on YouTube, uh, on uh, LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, I can see the comments here. So feel free to uh, actually comment anything. You can actually uh, send me a message if you can hear me well, see me well, and uh, we can start right away. Uh, hello, Isabella. Hello, Darius. Tina as well. Tarek, hello. So, um, okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's move on. Um, I have, uh, because you actually, uh, not all people actually sent me their vacancies, but actually still I got hundreds of vacancies you sent me. So I, I needed to kind of like take it, summarize it, put it into different categories a little bit. So there was uh, some work involved uh, prior to this. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's why uh, that's why of course that, that's the work uh, I needed to do actually. Uh, if you don't know me, I'm actually a former software engineer. I started as a former software engineer uh, back then, and somehow I skipped. Let's say in 2006, seven, I skipped into talent sourcing. Uh, from this perspective, yeah, that was the time when, let's say, in our region, Central Eastern Europe, all the things like LinkedIn in general, direct approach, everything like that actually started then and uh, because of as you know i was doing for example software engineering and i was doing it security before that and i liked these subjects because you can use your creativity fantasy you can create anything and with talent sourcing it's a little bit the same it's really similar uh, because there are no strict guidelines which you need to follow like maybe in law or or different subjects like that so uh, even like uh, technically tools you can use in IT security, you might be using here for maybe um, uncovering emails, for example, etc. Of course, in this sessions, uh, in this session today, we will focus mainly uh, on searching because, of course, we have like sixty minutes, something like that. Uh, so that's what we need to do. Uh, my background now, I'm a co-founder actually of a company, Good Call. Uh, we have some like 150 employees and they basically do sourcing all day long for different roles, not only IT, but of course, IT is there as well. Part of our business is Data Crude ATS because we know that technology and having in-house development, in-house software development is, cru is crucial actually in recruitment as well. That's why we created this company, Data Crude ATS, delivering ATS to different kind of companies from like smaller startups up to companies like Deloitte, for example. And Recruitment Academy, where we try to uh, put the know-how across the general public. If you want to know something like news, maybe because I, I published the book People as Merchandise back then, 2013. If you want to follow some of my new content, a part of these uh, webinars and uh, at such, uh, you can actually follow my new LinkedIn newsletter uh, on LinkedIn, where I try to more like grasp and really like scrutinize the new technologies. The next episodes will be about some AI as well, uh, but really practical things which you can actually use on daily basis. So, for example, the creepiest Stalin sourcing tool, how you can uncover people basically on the street based on the image recognition, uh, and you can actually do it practically. This is described right there. So if you want to follow it, uh, you can follow it. If you want something more formal, like uh, formal uh, sourcing education and uh, recruitment education with Recruitment Academy, we aim to be the global uh, certification authority. We have partners in different uh, countries and we are delivering content which is two up to four days so next next uh, actually round will be in november and december okay so let's skip to it right now uh hello so much hello hello marina uh usually i start the session with something 
which is not so common. Of course, you send me loads of Python developers, Java developers, .NET C Sharp developers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but usually, I try to start with something which is not so common. Of course, we will we will get to those uh, Python's and and Java developers as well. Pega or P E G A architect, uh, actually sent by Madalina Alina Vlad from Deutsche Telekom in Bucharest and Timișara in uh, in Romania. Actually, quite a lot of Romanians actually send me their vacancies. I don't know, maybe I'm famous in Romania. Mulțumesc frumos. Uh, which is thank you very much in in Romania. Uh, I was there like ten times maybe for business, so maybe it makes sense. PJ architect. Imagine sometimes for you maybe you are not so skilled because of course you are a recruiter, maybe you are a sourcer, maybe you are new to your role and you don't have the background of the IT terminology and let's say of the IT uh, subject uh, in your in your head. That's that's natural. So you look at this and you see. A lot of things, but usually many of those job descriptions can be simplified into a few things. Yeah, there might be more difficult things like with DevOps, for example. We will look at DevOps, I think, at the very end. Uh, but usually most of the job descriptions can be simplified. But of course, some IT terminology behind that is necessary. So as we can see, the ideal candidate should have a university degree in the field of information technology. Okay, maybe uh, it's a question how mandatory this is or not, uh, but uh, we will not be, it, it will not be definitely the primary thing we will be using for searching. Experience of four plus years in software design and technical PAG, PAG, PEGA architecture. Now, of course, this is probably important. So probably the, the keyword and the main keyword will be PGA, even if there are some other things like, uh, for example, PGA rules, process commander. Now you, you must be like alerted because PGA is a single word. PGA rules, it's still one word. But as you know, on LinkedIn, you are not able to search for keywords for the fraction of the keywords. So now we have definitely at least two keywords, PGA on its own and PGA rules altogether. But for LinkedIn, when we talk about LinkedIn, are two different keywords. Strong objective-oriented design and implementation skills. Okay, yeah, this will not be the things we will use for, for searching. Familiarity with various uh, process modeling techniques, blah, blah, blah. Uh, not interested like for, for the requirements. And if I look, I will not be reading all the things. PGA certification, okay, maybe that's interesting uh, just to know, aha, there is some PGA certification. Of course, it's probably called PGA certify something. So there is still the word, so PGA. So if someone has this uh, on, the, on the profile, yeah, maybe, of course, we will find them. But most of these certifications got also abbreviations. Yeah, so that's what we should be looking for, actually, in this case. Integration and implementation with SOAP, JMS, file listener, et cetera, et cetera. Not interested. If you know, for example, what SOAP it, it is, it's just, it, it's basically a protocol uh, for two application to be able to communicate to each other. Python developer can use it. Java developer can use it. Obviously, PG architect can use it as well. Uh, familiarity with J2EE, like with the Java framework. XML, Java, JSP, etc., etc. In the first phase, maybe that might be like the secondary requirement, not XML. XML is really like if I tell you that uh, you, you would put, for example, in the job description that you can type on a computer. Yeah, XML. All the programmers know XML. Definitely, all the architects know uh, XML. Yeah, so we will not be using that as a requirement. But J2EE is something more advanced and definitely not. Every Java, uh, uh, not every architect of any sort uh, would know J2EE. So we might be taking this, like we might be like highlighting this, maybe, maybe as a secondary, uh, as a secondary, uh, as, as a secondary option. When to use a secondary option? It also depends how many people we will get. Yeah, and we will see right away. Good knowledge of English, okay. So English experience uh, working in agile, okay, but we will not use it. Etc. Nothing else which would be which would be interested. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Goran. Thank you, Goran. Hvala. All right. So when we skip into 
let's keep into LinkedIn, of course. We will be talking about sourcing of LinkedIn, but uh, of course, LinkedIn is still important. Still, for example, at Good Call, it's the source uh, of candidates in 75% uh, of cases, let's say. So the problem with the non-paid version of LinkedIn now is we can put their PEGA, which will probably not be a problem, but uh, there is actually now, and you maybe experience that problem, if you put something into keywords in the non-paid LinkedIn, sometimes you get people who actually not have that word on their profiles. And that's a problem. That's a bummer. Uh, that's why, of course, if I have the option to use, for example, LinkedIn Recruiter, or maybe you don't have a LinkedIn Recruiter or LinkedIn Recruiter Lite, uh, you might have just a simple sales navigator. It might be a better, better option because you will be taking some numbers into account and those numbers will not be true. And then once you are going through the, through the, uh, through the individual profiles, you will find out, aha, uh -huh, this person don't have the PGA on his or her profile. Like why the profile is in my search results. Yeah, because it's buggy. All right. But let's try it as, as uh, for the first for the first search. I'm going ultimately for the PGA because that's that's the main keyword without anything, architects, etc. Yeah, we can always be more generic and always be more specific at the same time. So uh, we will see based on the number, even uh, based on the number of search results. I will put uh, Romania, of course, Romania, huge country, Bucharest. Timeshara, Klush Napoka, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we can then break it down. But again, uh, if you are skilled with searching on LinkedIn, you know that location, really boring filter. I, I, I get it. But for example, in experience with our sourcers, this is a filter where they lose quite a lot of people in the process. Because once you put there a city, or, for example, in case of Romania, like you put there uh, part of the city, like Cluj Napoca, maybe Cluj Napoca is a city, I guess, but Cluj Napoca or Cluj region, uh, I mean. Um, the problem is that people, let's, let's hit the search now. Uh, there are people on LinkedIn who actually didn't specify any city. They specify Romania, so you know that they are in Romania, so they should be in this search. But, for example, the, here, Luisa, Romania for Endeavor, yeah? But she's definitely based somewhere. And once we open her profile, we can, for example, see from her employer that it's probably Bucharest, yeah? Uh, so the problem is that the filter uh, location is searching the main location, which is right here, and she got there just Romania. So even if I will be looking for Bucharest, if I put here Bucharest, Luisa will be totally invisible for me. So in the first phase, I will definitely try to put their country. Every time when I want, I can go and be more specific under the circumstances that I know that I am ultimately losing some people in the process. So now I have Romania, but still now we can see Romania for PGA, 174 results. Not a lot. Yeah? If, if I put there just, just a comparison, yeah? maybe uh, you are from the US and you, you don't have like uh, the imagination about like how Romania is huge. If I put there Python, there are 31,000 people. Yeah? So it's definitely scarce. Yeah? Scarce of this uh, people of this sort there is, is definitely there. Of course, now we should be thinking, okay, PGA, uh, what the abbreviation means, for example, maybe some people, if, if it means something, uh, maybe some people are there with the full name of this. Definitely we can, just for comparison, we can put the PGA into, into eight version of LinkedIn. We have a little bit more, yeah, so there is a little bit mismatch. So yeah, I have a little bit more, like seven more with, uh, with LinkedIn Recruiter. Of course, in this case, I would, would not be doing anything else. I wouldn't be putting their Bucharest. I wouldn't be putting no cities. I wouldn't be putting there any other filter, not even architect. Of course, if I put here architect, 
of course you will like the results more yeah because you have just the architects now but just three yeah uh, so uh, in this case i would ignore anything else and i would go right one by one and opening those profiles like i recommend like open it like this like open 10 profiles like this into into buffer kind of and then i would be evaluating one by one and deciding if i want to approach or not and i'm done with the with the pga if, as i said uh, there is also the P, pga uh, rules sorry it was an intentional commercial advertisement here uh, pga uh, rules Okay, so we can verify, aha, uh -huh. okay, there is one, but this guy also has PGA on its own. And as you can see, uh, he's PGA Certified System Architect. So that's the certification uh, we were talking about. Let's uh, try to check, of course, when you are going through these profiles, you would probably learn something more. Yeah, you would probably learn maybe some other keywords, related keywords, etc. I'm not expert in PGA, so I don't have anything like from top of my head. Um, anyway, PGA Certified Architect. Uh, we can, of course, we can put it into Google, for example, and we can maybe also see if, for example, there is some, uh, yeah, here, uh, P PGA Certified Senior System Architect, uh, PCSSA, and, uh, but this guy, uh -huh, here, this guy is PGA Certified System Architect, PCSA. Yeah? So definitely we should try, for example, on its own, like totally separately. We don't need to combine it with this. Uh, we can actually exclude keywords. Yeah? So we could be actually can try like exclude this because we already go through all of those people having PGA and we will try, uh, we will try to verify if there are some people, none, yeah, because all of those people probably have this in the certifications anyway, so they got the PGA there anyway. So in this case, this will not help us. Actually, it can help us uh, with uh, some other roles. As you can see right here, we have three people having, having these certifications. Uh, Glenn, um, you mean, uh, I, I was searching, like, to be honest, if I have two keywords, Glenn is asking if, if I would have more results if I do it like that. I basically, I, I split it, right? I, I did PGA on its own and PGA rules on its own, which I think in general, of course, if there are some glitches in LinkedIn, which we know there is in this case, uh, I think uh, it's for me or for anybody, I think uh, it's better it's, it's better to separate it. You can avoid some of these glitches caused by a syntax, for example, that you use something more. Uh, so like in general, it should be the same. But of course, as a sourcer, we should be trying, we should be observing, we should be comparing if this makes sense, if, if it is possible that there are only 180 people in Romania. Isn't that some glitch? Shouldn't be there more. Yeah, we should be still uh, challenging, and uh, uh, we, we should be still challenging our our results and our progress. All right, uh, Rehem. Yeah, the session will be will be definitely available afterwards, as this is live on different platforms, and this is done automatically. All right, so this is basically it. Uh, I will not be now. Of course, in this case, as you can see, not too many results. Uh, it's maybe similar, like I was sourcing people, for example, for roles like Open DMS. Yeah, not so many people uh, can now work with the operating system Open VMS, usually used in the past in uh, in banking, etc. Uh, so you need to be more exhaustive. You need to be really trying to find these people. So of course, in this case, I would be going to other platforms. Uh, I would definitely try to, uh, in this case, Google PGA because I don't know it. For me, it's it's something uh, which I don't know. And maybe there are some specific websites where there are communities with these people. Um, there will be some website probably uh, of the company who 
which owns actually PGA, who, who's the development company of this uh, of this platform, yeah, etc., etc., etc. Uh, I will be I will be throughout uh, the other roles. I will be showing some of these other steps, so you can actually replicate this. But I will not be showing that with this role right now. Uh, but as you can see, just the the idea, because the idea will be also in the similar fashion in the in the further uh, job descriptions. A lot of things in the job description, but basically we took like one, two, maybe three lines from that. And we work with that and we kind of uh, get rid of the rest. Next one, uh, short notice from, from actually from Glenn, actually, who's uh, commenting here in the, in the, in the chat as well. Uh, Glenn Gutmacher from NVIDIA, uh, from Santa Clara, sent me actually some of uh, his roles as I asked him to send me something non-Java, non-Python, etc. Uh, he sent me a nice hardware role, senior ASIC, uh, verification engineer. In this case, it's maybe like a similar story like this in a way that I have no clue. Yeah, because I, I was I was doing some embedded developers for Siemens, for example, etc. But this is still a, something a little bit different. Um, so when we go through the job description, as you can see in uh, in the I, I don't know if you know what ASIC is. Uh, ASIC I, I didn't know before like before Bitcoin as well, because, uh, for example, the, the miners, uh, which uh, people use for mining Bitcoin, um, either use regular computer or use a specialized hardware, ASIC, uh, for mining Bitcoin. NVIDIA probably, Glenn can actually comment on that in the, in the, in the comments, uh, is using this for, I don't know if it's for graphic cards or maybe for some AI uh, AI operations, for example. So some specific operation, you create a specific circuit. Yeah, the, the C actually he mean means circuits. Uh, so uh, this is this is something more than with software with electro engineering. Anyway, when we see what's needed here, uh, you should have as I said electric engineering or computer science, computer engineering, um, some experience, and there are some things like objective or uh, oriented uh, programming, so-called OOP. We will see probably that more often today, but nothing uh, I would use in the, in the search. What might be more, more interesting here is that the proficiency in verification of IP with system Verilog, that might be definitely the keyword, UVM, that might be definitely the, the keyword. So uh, I would definitely start with ASIC and maybe in this case, in combination with maybe the verification engineer. Now we are on different market. Uh, we will be on the on the US market. So uh, maybe for the first, of course, I will not be trying. I could uh, be trying like United States, but in this case, I will put there Santa Clara right away. And based on that, we will go wider or or we will keep and we will stick with that. Uh, in this case, we can. I, I would just put here the basic keyword, which is the ASIC. Quite a lot of results. Quite a lot of results uh, may be unexpected uh, for a person uh, who don't and who's not experienced uh, with this technology. Over forty thousand results. Yeah. So I guess Glenn, like, what's the problem? What's the problem there? So in this case, I can be even uh, more brave and I can maybe in this case try even to put here the verification engineer, yeah, which is maybe some standardized role uh, in this hardware and electro engineering subject. I choose current for the first phase. Yeah, usually, of course, we try current as the first phase when we have like not so many results like for the PGA. Uh, we can extend it to past, uh, current or past. If we have like decent, I would stick with current and then skip to past not current because still with past not current, you can uncover people who are currently on the role, but they don't put it on their LinkedIn because they finished their role last month, which could be like one day ago. If, if the last day of the last month is yesterday, the people who put there, I'm finished at the end of August, if the end of August is yesterday, 
still those people are uh, on the position, like realistically, they are still on the position uh, who they stand for here, like in this case, verification engineer. So still it makes sense then go into past not current as well. With PGA, we didn't experience that because we didn't use title at all. Yeah, we use just keywords. So uh, that's out of question there. Now we have actually still 1000 results. Yeah, So uh, for Santa Clara County in this case, so some kind of like region, uh, we have people with verification engineer plus ASIC uh, on their profiles and then do it currently. Of course, uh, we can exclude NVIDIA as uh, uh, people from NVIDIA because we can see a bunch of them here as well. I will do it like like uh, keywords, like minus NVIDIA. Of course, I can, I, can do, I can do NVIDIA like this, choose NVIDIA and then do this. Yeah, uh, but whenever I can, and, and click current, whenever I can, I try to exclude it like a keyword, yeah, because if you are choosing these suggestions, you are only uh, then seeing people who are actually linked to a specific company or role also based on the suggestions. So uh, whenever I can, I can do this. So we actually excluded something like 100 people, all right. We will not be touching people from NVIDIA. But still, 900, it's, it's great, even if I don't know what's the benchmark for, for the US market there uh, for, uh, for these roles. But for example, here in the Central Eastern Europe, based on our data, we can now see that we need to approach sometimes up to 300 people to get that one higher in software engineering. Yeah. This might be a little bit different, but maybe not so on evidently competitive market in in California even with these uh, with these roles. Glenn is already suggesting me using system Verilog or Verilog. Okay, so we got some other uh, we got some other keywords right here. Definitely the, the the system Verilog right here. So we can we can try to. Because we can we can kind of kind of afford it. Yeah, we have nine hundred people, so we can put here system very log like this. Yeah, I would put it like this. Uh, Glenn is saying, is telling me also using very log. He probably knows this, of course, better than me. As I said, I'm not like typically from from hardware, so I would do probably something like that. And see, and still, most of the people use this as well. Okay, so we can be still even more brave with using, for example, UV UVM, yeah, because UVM was there as well. Some advanced methodologies such as UVM. Maybe you have no clue what UVM is, yeah. To be honest, I don't know either, yeah, in this case. So I put it there like this, but as you can see, most of the people use it as well, yeah. So we can start, now it's a question, uh, what else uh, we would put here? Glenn is from the business, Glenn is from NVIDIA, and he would be thinking, uh, he could be thinking like, okay, we do this, this is this project, people from uh, companies of some sort, maybe I, I saw some people from Apple here, that, that there is uh, Yamini here from Meta, yeah, from Facebook, maybe those are not people uh, we want. Yeah, because we want these people working more on these, I don't know, like I will made it up like AI projects. Yeah, so uh, we could be more specific, for example, in terms of of companies. But definitely, this seems that uh, it's 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 not like definitely like scarce scarcity of uh, of these people. Like for example, in the case of PGA. So. Um, yeah, so that would be probably that would be probably it. As well with the previous example, of course, we can go deeper. We can go deeper with other channels, etc. But I will be showing that uh, later on with something else. Glenn, you can you can let me know if uh, if you have some anything, uh, any other specific questions to that, uh, and of course we can we can discuss. As I said, most of you send me the, the classical software development roles. So I actually 
uh, chose one right here, Python developer for SEO and SEM, uh, which means search engine optimization, search engine management. From Katerina, actually. Katerina Ostrčelová from Heureka, from Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, so uh, Heureka, it's, uh, it's, it's internet company, let's say. So uh, also the similar role uh, was sent by uh, Jonila uh, Serban from Tales from Romania. Salute. Uh, so this is, this is the description of the, of the role. Uh, as you can see, let's dive in into the job description uh, here as well. The person will be designing some tools in Python for SEO and performance marketing. Of course, SEO, SEM is really much connected with uh, with digital marketing. Uh, so the person should be working uh, with some tools like Git. In general, Git, I will not be searching Git in, uh, it, it's like the XML uh, or it's like HTML or in this case, as we can see here, HTTP, yeah, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, all the programmers knows what HTTP is. All the programmers knows what uh, HTML is. And not only they know about it, but they can use it uh, to some extent, as well as they know how to use Git, like, for example, GitHub or anything else, uh, as well as API concepts. Uh, API, uh, which is like application programming interface, like how to connect to applications, for example. Now we are solving, for example, how to connect our website with a CRM. Yeah? we might be, the programmers might be using some uh, API, like I mentioned SOAP, for example, or they can use REST, uh, REST API and such. But those are general things. And usually, or in general, we assume that all programmers know it. So we don't, we are not interested in this. It's Python programmer. So good knowledge of Python. It's probably, it's probably what we want to use. Uh, they use also Golang. So as a secondary as a secondary requirement, we will we will use Golang as for example Python. It's not actually a programming language; it's a scripting language to be precise. But we can expect quite a lot of users. Yeah, if you remember, thirty one thousand in Romania. Yeah, so for uh, uh, for the Romania people, of course, a lot of people in the Czech Republic. We can expect ten thousands uh, as well. So we will probably need some secondary. Uh, parameters to uh, actually narrow it down. Database awareness, all programmers have some database awareness. In this case, experience with NoSQL, okay, that might be a little bit more specific, not just uh, having knowledge of any, any database like Oracle, MySQL, MSSQL, etc., Postgres, but NoSQL, which is some different sort of database, like, for example, MongoDB or Redis uh, in this case. So. Uh, some examples of these uh, no SQL databases. Ability to work in a team, okay, um, learn new things, nothing special. Uh, knowledge uh, like the GitLab CI, the continuous integration, Docker, Kubernetes, Grafana. Usually we can, th those are more specific things like like Docker, Kubernetes, it's more like how to distribute the, 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 the applications somewhere. Uh, with the configuration, etc. But currently, it's it's quite typical. Uh, it's it's already quite typical for developers that they know and they have some general knowledge at least uh, with, for example, Docker and and Kubernetes. Nothing special. Nothing special. Yeah. So, in this case, uh, when I open the non-paid LinkedIn, I would start usually with these roles where they are like um, keywords oriented. Python developer, it's, it's really keyword oriented. Why? Because it can be also Python software engineer. It can be Python coder. It can be Python and each country, Romania, Czech Republic, Poland, etc. English speaking countries, of course, uh, can have different local variations of these uh, of these roles, yeah. In the Czech Republic, it can be programmator, yeah, like programmer. Another English word, programmer, Python programmer. Yeah. So um, still, the, the the common thing there is is the Python. Yeah. So I would start with the Python, 
and any other variations of Python, which for Python, to be honest, there are maybe none. Yeah, maybe like Pi, but probably probably not. Yeah, it's it's something like for the the language, for example, Ruby, because usually in Ruby you don't work with the the core Ruby, but with the framework Ruby on Rails, you would use this Ruby on Rails uh, is. The, the abbreviation, yeah. But with Python, we will probably put there Python, yeah. If you have any other keywords for Python, uh, you can let me know. But I'm not sure there are any. So I would put there Python. Click on people, and now I got all people having Python, which of course can be, which will be including you. Yeah? So I said I, I will put the country. I will not put the city. So I put there Czechia. Czech Republic, and uh, in this case, I have 24,000. So uh, as you can see, almost similar number like in, in Romania. But of course, in this list, you can be in this list as well. If you have on your profile, I'm looking for Python developers, for example. Uh, but as I said, the common like denominator is, the, the common thing is the Python there. The second word can be anything like expert, specialist, programmer, coder, developer, etc. So I would rather uh, exclude people who are definitely not who, who should not be on the list. Like for example, director, yeah, like manager, etc. Maybe CEO, yeah, and maybe of course, like if I mentioned you, I would exclude you as well, yeah, recruiter, recruitment, etc. Still, with this, you can lose some, uh, some people in the process, of course, because uh, this is excluding a current roles. If there is someone who is Python developer, and at the same time, the person is, for example, manager at his own company, yeah, maybe he has some like family, family business, something like that, you will actually exclude that person completely as well. Yeah, so this cannot distinguish between between those. So it will exclude anyone having manager in their current roles. The problem is some people can have two or three or more current roles. We excluded some. Yeah, uh, but as you can see, Python developer, Python developer, Python programmator, which means programmer, Python developer, etc. So uh, this look uh, this looks pretty good. If you will find some pattern that they are. I don't know, some consultants. Yeah, we can exclude more if we want. With a consultant, I would be I would be a little bit afraid because of course many consultants, like Java consultant, consultant, etc., are also programmers. All right, so what's next? We have 23,000, yeah, of course. So uh, in this case, uh, we can now skip to in this case, I would probably skip also and use the city. In this case, it was the city of Brno. So in this case, I would use Brno metropolitan area, which is a larger area than just Brno, South Moravia. So I would use Brno. And of course, that would be a huge cut there, 5,000. Still 5,000 is a lot. I should be thinking, yeah, I need hundreds to, to actually... To fill the role, as I said, I need two to three hundred of these people to approach in general to actually, on average, actually be able to, to fill the role. So the volume is in my favor, yeah? but still 5,000, it's, it's still quite a lot. In this case, I can actually go to some secondary keywords, probably not the HTTP, Git, API, that's... If you put it there and people having it there, it's saying nothing. But Golang, we have some services in Golang. Uh, it might be definitely the the advantage, and it's not it's not so common like API. Yeah, it's totally different thing. Uh, so we can uh, sorry we can put there Golang. Of course, now we are a little bit trusting uh, trusting uh, the non-paid LinkedIn of uh, non-paid version of LinkedIn that it's doing a good job. Uh, so definitely I would verify here or definitely I would verify here if it makes sense. But I'm trying now use a non-paid version of LinkedIn because all of you can use it as well. But the principles of searching is totally the same. We can say it's totally the same 
in, in the paid version. With, for example, uh, as Glenn got his role, I think it was called senior. So, of course, when we got a lot of, uh, lot of results, like thousands, we got like 900 uh, with, with this role, uh, we can also still use the, the filter, for example, for years of experience. Yeah? And maybe in this case, uh, starting with years in the current company. Because this filter is nice in a way that you can expect that there is some lifespan of these people in their current roles, like or, or in general in the companies. So we can, for example, start and break it down the huge number, like even like, like 900 or 5,000 uh, in Python case. And we can, for example, do this and see people, not all people. Yeah, this filter also works a little bit. Uh, it, there, are, there are some glitches there, uh, but we can definitely see some people having four to 30 years of experience on that current role. So they might be already like over the, the period of time where they would like to change the job, for example. So I can use these people, which I filtered that they are at least four years at the role. Not only that they are senior, yeah, that would be one thing. But the second thing is that uh, I have a better chance actually to hire these people because they already spent a decent time uh, in that company. Yeah, so definitely uh, this is one of the filters uh, we would use for for the scenarios where we can where we can do it, like when we have some volume. In this case, when we put there the gold lung, we got 175. So we really, it really shrinked uh, to a small number. And in this case, I wouldn't be putting anything else. Yeah, it, it doesn't make any sense to put there to put there anything else from these actually. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would go one by one, and I would try my chance with firstly with these people right here because they obviously. Not only they work with Python, but they mention Golang, so uh, they might have some experience there as well. When we move forward, uh, for example, from LinkedIn somewhere else, because in this case, uh, this would be basically it. Yeah, uh, the second thing I might try instead of Golang uh, is going back to Python. So Python minus the 175 people is the rest I can I can still work with, and uh, of course, still it makes sense to kind of break it down, like chunk it to uh, slice it to smaller chunks, and uh, based on some priority. So I mentioned one priority might be the 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 number of years at one company. Another thing might be that I can use even if, as I said. It's quite typical. Let's say API, HTTP, it's so typical. I wouldn't use it. It doesn't make sense Yeah, for developers, for developers. For some other roles, it might be, but for developers, not. But things like Kubernetes, you can try. And as you can see, still 300 people actually mentioned Python and Docker or Kubernetes, uh, in which we have here, or Grafana uh, or Grafana for for that, well, and we have a 327. Yeah, so that that could be another another priority list which I would take as number second, for example. Of course, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't mean that other people from this list, like we can try, of course, the minus. It's it's sometimes quite crappy, but now it it obviously works. So we have the 5,000 something minus people having Docker or Kubernetes or uh, or Grafana. We, could, we can put here the Golang as well. It's working somehow. It seems it's working. Yeah, the minus might be sometimes not working well, but like just based on the numbers I can see here, even if it's rounded, uh, it can be like 4,731. Uh, but obviously it works. So now I have, I solved a few hundred of people and now I'm working with the rest, which is still quite quite high number. But I can I can like slice it like that till 
I go through everything if it's necessary. Maybe it will not be necessary because you will fill the role in that progress. But maybe then uh, you will skip uh, just uh, also for the sake of showing that Facebook. Yeah? Maybe uh, you wouldn't be searching uh, Facebook directly on Facebook. Uh, I actually um, I have created here the, the Facebook opener. It's, it's uh, actually Glenn might know it well uh, because I think he's playing with these JavaScript things uh, as well. Uh, it's bookmarklet, uh, which is opening me different var variations uh, in the native search of Facebook. But the problem is with Facebook, you have a predefined roles. You can put it there like software engineer, but it's not Python software engineer. Yeah. So in this case, it's maybe better to search Facebook from Google with so-called X-ray searching. So we can do, I would do something like facebook.com. In this case, uh, I use www. Um, I'm, I'm not using that with mostly uh, other searches like GitHub, but in this case, it worked better for me. And here I put, for example, I try to put there just Python, Brno. Uh, usually the locations on Facebook are uh, determined by, by cities, not by country. And I put here present just to filter, um, filter out like false positive results. And uh, I want to see mostly uh, just, uh, just people. Yeah. So for example, here, as you can see, Petr Konjarek, Jiří Chromečka, Filip Bajanik. So it seems they are really lives in Brno, software programmer with Seznam, and uh, he got somewhere a uh, Python developer. Yeah, I didn't see it from here, but it's obviously somewhere there. Here, Python developer at Roy Hunter. I think Roy Hunter also sent me some of their roles. If I remember, but we got it here. Yeah, uh, and for example, here uh, as well. Not exactly sure where uh, Python is, maybe somewhere here. Yeah, here, Python. Yes, so of course it's possible. Yeah, maybe this bias, like you can also use like Facebook for, uh, for searching for uh, programmers and IT people. As you can see, it might be really a bias. Uh, as you can see, we are not, we don't need to actually approach those people right here on the platform. But now we know that Philip Bayanik actually is, or now is, he's probably iOS developer. He used to be Python developer. Uh, but if you want to approach him, we can do it maybe on a different platform. Uh, there is some question on Facebook. What about searching for SEO? That was a good point. Like uh, that was with this role for Python. Um, Definitely a good point. Yeah, it's a Python developer for for the digital marketing uh, department, like performance market, uh, marketing department. So definitely, I guess having a Python developer with some knowledge and with some awareness of SEO, SEM, definitely it might be the case. Yeah, so thank you for that. It would look something like this. Uh, so we can check. SEO, SEM, uh, of course, even like SEO uh, can be maybe if you break it down, of course, it's, it's search engine optimization, but uh, maybe things like digital marketing, uh, Google AdWords, et cetera, et cetera, like Google Analytics, yeah, the, these kind of related keywords uh, might be connected with that as well, because someone, Python is, is a scripting language, uh, people usually learn how to program uh, with that. So uh, people in digital marketing who skipped into programming might have some, uh, of course, background in, uh, in, in these things like SEO and now they are programmers. So we can find them here as well. So we can even extend it by, by things like AdWords, etc. cetera. It might, uh, it might make, it can make total sense. Yeah. So as we can see right here, so thank you, thank you for the for the comment. Definitely, definitely a good one. 
All right, so we were on Facebook. We can skip if you want. Uh, you probably heard about GitHub. Uh, of course, you can have on GitHub, you can have there your, uh, your uh, login and you, you can actually for free, you can have an account there and you can do the searches here. So uh, here you can search just by the keywords like, for example, Python. And if you know these search queries, you can put their location in Brno, for example. Yeah? And we have 54 users. As you can see right here in the column, you can choose some other languages and scripting languages. Uh, programming and scripting languages where I can click on Python, which means people whose primary language is Python. Uh, in this case, I would get rid of this uh, of this keyword. And with this, I searched one, uh, 483 people whose primary language is Python and they are based in Brno. Uh, the problem with GitHub, or it's not a problem, it's, it's a feature, uh, but uh, is that there might be a different, the, the, the location is actually a text field. Yeah? So as you can see, Brno, Czech Republic, just Brno. Yeah? Brno, comma, CZ. Yeah? So uh, of course, for different countries, cities, you should be trying different variations. Yeah? Uh, the local one, English one. Uh, abbreviation like London, LND, LON, for example, Tel Aviv, TLV, uh, etc., etc. Yeah, so that's definitely thing, uh, the thing you should do. There is advanced search where you can actually put all of these things right there. Um, you can also use things like, for example, Octohunt. You don't have account there. You can use Octohunt. You can put here Python, Bruno search and you have people from from github yeah easy from red hat and his profile looks like this yeah that's that's also possible of course it's also possible to x-ray search it in this case it would look like github.com i will put here just python and i will put here Bruno, and i will put here i use the contribution activity to actually have uh, people, people only uh, in the search results. So uh, in this case, we can see some results, uh, not so many, uh, but this is it, yeah? So uh, it's uh, also definitely possible. Of course, uh, I just open here another presentation where you can see the possible channels where you can go. It's, it can be dev.2. I don't know if you know dev.2. There are maybe like 1 million programmers. And also it's possible to uh, X-ray search it. I can put here dev.2. Supportive keyword is joined uh, on, I think. Uh, we, will, we will figure out. Python. Uh, Bruno. Like the location, Bruno. I have 14, uh, 14 results. Of course, just remember that in this case, it's quite straightforward because Python has basically no other variations. And Bruno also, Bruno is Bruno in, in English, in Czech. Yeah, uh, of course, I could be trying to use like, like Czech Republic, Czechia. Uh, if, you, if you do, uh, for example, sourcing in, in Hungary, so you should probably use Hungary, Magyar or Sak, like the local variation of Hungary. Uh, and maybe then the cities, yeah, like Budapest, for example, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there is definitely a sourcing work here. In this case, it might be quite straightforward, but with a different location and different, tech, um, different programming language, it might be more searches. And in this case, I recommend rather than use ORs here, like something OR, something OR, or with, with location as well, I recommend to do it like like small searches like this, but do more of them. Yeah. Because also Google, it's a little bit like a magic, what, what uh, you can put there. And sometimes you need to elaborate with that. With this, you can avoid quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of uh, mistakes and missed candidates. So dev.2, just so you can see it, how it looks like. Michal Ševčík, 
uh, I used joint on because as you can see, all the people, even if, if they didn't put anything on their profiles, uh, there is actually joint on there. So uh, I, can, I can use it right here and this is the profile. Yeah, uh, you can go to Twitter, you can go to YouTube, Quora, Reddit. Basically, almost all of these are actually uh, searched by Google. So if you if you go to LinkedIn, I would cover LinkedIn. Then I would go to other social media based, of course, priority based on what you do. It means like Facebook. It means Twitter. Uh, it means maybe sometimes even Instagram, Reddit. Then I would go to IT specific IT specific portals like Stack Overflow, Coderwall, Dev.2, GitHub, maybe Bitbucket, maybe some other uh, Git-like servers. Yeah, which uh, uh, which I'm not sure if they are here on this list. Yeah, etc. Uh, etc. Et even like finally YouTube. Yeah, but of course uh, there should be there should be some. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to go like firstly to dev.2 because of course we know that on LinkedIn there is the, there is the volume. All right. Uh, when you finished with these like GitHub, Stack Overflow, etc., I would go, I usually say like anywhere to the cyberspace. So of course there are a lot of profiles on the internet and they are not placed on social media. They are not placed on GitHub. Stack Overflow. They are just there flying there somewhere in the cyberspace, but we can define them somehow. One thing is that, for example, they are, there can be Python developers on companies' pages. There can be Python developers like their personal pages, yeah, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's simply about how to use Google to search for people's profiles, but we are not interested in social media and uh, and things like GitHub. One thing can be done, for example, over image search. Uh, I can, for example, put here Python. I can put there, for example, even like even, even Bruno, yeah, like the location. If I stick with the example we got there, I click on images. I click here on advanced search. I would put here type of image face. And I got some results. And as you can see, the results are, are the, the faces of people. Most of the case, you can see that it will be probably some kind of profiles. There is also LinkedIn. Yeah? LinkedIn, LinkedIn. So let's get rid of LinkedIn minus LinkedIn.com, which forces us to actually do this again. So let's do this again. Type of image, face, search. Uh, okay, yeah, and now we can go one by one and we can check, for example, what's this, tutoring.eu uh, or something like that. And uh, there are actually people who teach something. So there are probably some people here. Uh, Václav is teaching people in Python, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we got some profile where we would normally don't go at all yeah, because we don't know that there is some port, uh, there, there is some service where uh, you, you can learn from other people. Yeah, we, we assume that they are, but we don't know exactly. Yeah. So with this, you can nicely uncover profiles uh, from different sources. And of course, these people might not be presented on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn GitHub, Stack Overflow, or you were not able to find them there yeah, because they didn't use the right keywords you were using for the search. In a similar way, you can, for example, search for, if I put here Python developer, and you can be searching maybe for uh, sites like about us, about me, yeah, etc. So this is usually defined by, if I click, for example, on my personal page, similar way on the company page. Uh, if I click, for example, into about, it means that in the URL, there is about. It also means that in title, which, which is this, what you have here in the name of the, of the tab, it's like in the, in the language of HTML, uh, it's already, uh, it, it's, it's standardized field, let's say. Uh, there is also about. So 
Yeah, Monty Python, totally. Uh, so I put here Python developer, and if I want to search in URL, I put here in URL about or about me, about us, depending like our company and the local variations as well. You will say differently in Romania, in, Fra in, in, in French, in Spanish, etc. And I would hit search. And I would go through the results. Yeah, in this case, I didn't put there uh, the location. Yeah, so in this case, for example, there is also the about.me where there are people's profiles. As we can see, we have some Jan Pacek, Python developer at sysnum.cz. Sysnum, it's something like Google. Uh, it's a Czech Google, which is still keeping the numerancy over, over Google. Actually, we are maybe only country uh, where Google is not the primary search, uh, search engine. For IT guys, yes, but for general public. Yeah, so, or for example, here we have some personal website, yeah, personal website, all the profiles, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so if you know how to search, if you know what are the patterns of what we are searching, so we search for the whole game we play here is that we search for profiles, profiles of people, yeah. If we know that there are some profiles like personal profiles, uh, profiles on company pages, etc. We can say like technically it means that in the URL there is something like slash our company, slash company, slash about us, or slash about me, slash CV, slash my profile, etc. We can put it into Google and we can search through the results and you will find profiles regardless of any social media. Yeah, so that would be the top down. Uh, I would say top-down funnel from from your database, your ATS. That's of course the first thing where you should go. LinkedIn, general social media like Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, then GitHub Stack Overflow, Dev.2, and these things up to uh, or down to actually the rest of the cyberspace. Of course, it can be even more complicated. Like uh, when I will show you quickly. Uh, I will not be doing that. I can do that live, but of course, uh, we have some time allocated here. But uh, by the way, this face search, face search, face search is for the image search. It will automatically uh, predefine the advanced search type of image face. But what I wanted to say is with Twitter, let me just go here. Yeah, uh, you can use, for example, people search, or you can use follower wong, where you can easily, as you can see, actually, I got Python right here uh, for a different location. Python, I can search BIOS only in Budapest. On Twitter, there is the location. So in this case, I'm searching Budapest. I have those people. Yeah, but the thing is, the same thing is with people search. But the thing is that you also uh, can sort people based on the followers. So as you can see, Justinas here is, this is DevOps actually, uh, if I go back to follower Wong. Uh, so in Budapest, this guy right here is the most influential Python developer in Hungary based on the, based on the followers. Yeah. Uh, Laszlo is the number second. Yeah. So how about taking t do, uh, these two profiles and check which people actually follow both of these guys. If there is someone who follows both of these guys, it makes this guy a uh, Python developer or aspiring Python developer as well, right? So you can do that with Tweep Diff. Yeah? We were using uh, Tweet Beaver, but actually it doesn't work anymore, but Tweet Diff is actually even better. So you can put there two, the Twitter handles of two or more profiles. You can say what you want to compare, let's say followers, and you got the results people who follow both of these profiles. These people who follow both of these profiles, they don't have to have anything Python related on their profile. So you wouldn't find them based on the keywords. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I can definitely, I can definitely share, share this. Uh, we will, we will send it to all people uh, actually registered here. All right. So let's move on. Of course, there are it's basically the same story. If you have 
Uh, I have uh, other uh, roles here, Java software engineer uh, from, from Romania, uh, Java developer from the company KMD from Warsaw, Poland, iOS developer with some JavaScript and Python experience uh, from uh, Martina from Business Factory in the Czech Republic and JavaScript developer with Python actually. So both uh, or like two scripting languages at the same time uh, from Bucharest, Romania again. So it would be basically the same story. He, these roles would be more complicated than Python because Java, as well as JavaScript, as well as iOS, you need to break down and expand actually those keywords. So for, for example, iOS is not the name of the language you program on, uh, on, uh, on iPhones. Yeah? It's not called iOS. It's called Objective-C. It might be another language like Go, so you need to work with this, yeah? Uh, as well as JavaScript. JavaScript is the basic scripting language, but JavaScript can mean working with React.js, Node.js, Angular, Vue.js, many frameworks, yeah? For example, TypeScript also. Uh, Microsoft uh, built open source TypeScript based on JavaScript. So it's more complicated because you need to expand. You need to expand of the, uh, on those keywords. Python is simple because it's just Python. All right. Uh, by the way, there is uh, such a talent sourcing checklist where you can actually. Uh, it's like uh, one one pager uh, which will guide you through some where you can go like skip to LinkedIn and do title search and keyword search, industry search, etc. It will not do searches for you, but just having some basic structure behind that. Where, we, where it is more complicated when it starts with things like full stack engineer, full stack backend developer. Uh, here we have PHP developer. Yeah? Uh, it's more complicated where we involve those frameworks. I think here the some knowledge of IT terminology is already necessary. Why? Let me demonstrate. Uh, by the way, we can with this simple picture explain like the whole structure of this software development. Yeah, uh, the bun of the hamburger uh, is, for example, as you can see, JavaScript, React.js, JSON, jQuery, HTML. That's that's the that's the front end side. That's what you can see. Yeah? HTML is the website. That's what you can see. Uh, buttons, etc. Uh, for example, Bootstrap. Those are the buttons, etc. Uh, CSS. This is the style. How it looks like. So it's the front end. Underneath there is, as we already mentioned, how to connect front end with back end. How to connect what you put into the form on the website with the place where it's sent and it's doing something there. So, for example, REST API, SOAP, in general, API, WebSocket. Then there are some databases. Yeah? You need to save it somewhere, so some information. So uh, some databases like Postgre, et cetera. We already mentioned that. Then you have the, the, the programming languages, yeah? which is doing something already on the back end. And it's sitting on some platform, on some operating uh, system, like Linux, Windows, Android, for example, of course, but cloud, uh, cloud computing systems as well, like AWS, for example, or Microsoft Azure, yeah, or Google Cloud. So this is the basic terminology. So full stack means that people, you can see the first one, you should know from front end, JavaScript, TypeScript, React.js, HTML, CSS. From backend, you should know JavaScript, Node.js, Express, MongoDB, Postgres, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, some other things, as I said, uh, all programmers usually know things like uh, GitLab, continuous uh, uh, integration, Jenkins, Docker, AWS Cloud on Amazon, etc. Yeah, so you need the programmer needs to know everything. Then you have backend developer; he or she is doing just the backend. And on the other hand, front end. I think we have some front end here, for example, from Lazma uh, from Avalanche Laboratory in Riga, Latvia. So. Front-end people, they do just, just the bun, just, just the, the, the face. Yeah? The problem is that when you don't know the terminology exactly, you will be doing mistakes in how, to, uh, how you actually put it into, for example, LinkedIn. Yeah? 
when there are requirements like JavaScript, TypeScript, React.js, if you do this, if you do JavaScript, TypeScript, React.js, enter. Uh, let me check this was, uh, actually we don't know because that was probably anonymous entry. So I don't know who actually sent this, but let me put there something. Let me put there some location. Like for example, Paris. Yeah, the problem is that you put there these uh, these three uh, these three programming languages or frameworks. In this case, uh, you get rid of HTML, CSS. As we said, those are basics. All full stack engineers will definitely know how to handle HTML and cascade styles, which is CSS. But still, this is not totally right. We got results. We got 2,000 results. The problem is that TypeScript, as well as React.js, ultimately means that those people can do JavaScript. Because React.js, you can see already the JS in the name, means JavaScript. So React.js is framework written in JavaScript. So people who can handle React.js can handle it's falling back to that they can handle JavaScript as well. So why to force them actually to why to force them to use the word JavaScript? So when we get rid of JavaScript, we got 2,300 people. So we lost 300 people just because we, let's say, misinterpreted. We we didn't put the exhaustive search result there. Still, we can improve on, uh, on this uh, because, for example, React.js, we could definitely put just React there. Uh, you can see React.js as well with, with React.js, React but usually this dot is usually interpreted uh, as space. Yeah, anyway, so, but we can rather put it there rather than not. Enter. And we have something more. Yeah? We have around 100 more. Yeah? Uh, the question is if TypeScript has some other uh, has some other variations. Yeah, but this would be this this would be for me uh, definitely a better search as you can see from the results. So uh, I I don't expect any false positive results based on the fact that there would be people who uh, who actually don't know JavaScript. All right. So uh, if you want to, for example, here we got the rules uh, from, uh, from Yulia uh, Maticiewicz, Bukarest, Romania, JavaScript developer with Python. She could also use for the word JavaScript, not just the JavaScript, but in this case, it's, it's a different story. When I'm looking for JavaScript people, I could use this JavaScript or TypeScript or React.js or React or React.js or any other any other framework in JavaScript, Angular or AngularJS or Vue.js, yeah, etc. Now I will have the problem with the number of OR operators. So of course, in this case, I would need to do a simple trick like this. Uh, get rid of the spaces after or and put these into into parentheses yeah i will not be doing that right now but that's the thing you need to do uh, otherwise you will get like no results which is a nonsense yeah in this case i should have quite a lot of results yeah but this is what how you should expand the word javascript to actually get all the people with the knowledge of javascript because a lot of people now even imagine profiles who are, for example, front-end developer, and there is nothing else on the profile. We can kind of assume that this person can actually handle JavaScript. Even without that, there is not a single word with JavaScript, not a single word with any JavaScript framework, right, like React, Angular, etc. Nothing else, yeah? Still, we can we can assume that the person is JavaScript. By the way, JavaScript also I should put there the JS, yeah, something like that. So this is quite extensive already, quite extensive uh, search prompt, search query for 
uh, when I would be looking for people with JavaScript, JavaScript in general. Yeah. So just be aware of this. Uh, this is uh, definitely not only for for JavaScript. This is for even for Linux, for example. I will show you right away. We can I, I can demonstrate, for example, with the PHP developer for Kateřina Berňáková from the Czech Republic. Uh, she's looking for PHP developers. Uh, and PHP also has their frameworks like Symfony or Nette, etc. Yeah. So when we break down these requirements, important thing is PHP, Symfony, optional experience, PIM core. Okay. To be honest, I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, that's how it is. Again, CSS, JavaScript, React, it's a plus. Okay. We might be using that like a secondary, secondary parameter. API REST, we would not be using that probably, uh, as well as these other things right here, um, Azure, etc. Yeah, maybe like a third parameters, yeah, but I don't think it will be necessary. So the same thing when I'm looking for uh, people with Symfony, I would not be doing this. So the requirement says PHP Symfony. But if I use PHP Symfony like this, I'm losing some people. If I use PHP Symfony, I have 105. Uh, because also here is Symfony, but it's also written like Symfony. Yeah. So in this case, we might we might be uh, aware of how this is actually. You can see more frequent, it's actually Symfony with F, not with PH. Uh, so we have 5,000, uh, but when we use without the PHP, we have 5,900. 5, yeah? So this is a better search because all the people having Symfony uh, in, their, in their profiles means that they do PHP. That's, that's the fact. In this case, maybe some people might be like from some like music symphony, but yeah, that would be the false positives. But in general, uh, it works like that. So sometimes a more simple search, easier search is better uh, than uh, actually some like rather sophisticated search, yeah, which you think will work better. But as you can see, it will not. Let's move on. The similar thing would be with Angular and Go, full stack developer, uh, React native developer, again, Romania, Romania, Multumesk Frumos, uh, from Diana Ionita, uh, bearing point. So uh, this is what you need to be aware. As I said, with a JavaScript, I would, for example, use even like the word front end. As you can see, front end right here. Uh, where we have here, for example, front end and front end with hyphen, front end with space, front end all together. So even like the word front end will create three different keywords for us. But I would use the word front end on the same level as, for example, the word JavaScript as well on the same level, React.js, etc. Because as I said, there might be people, front end developers, and they don't have anything else on their profiles. You need to assume that these people will be, for example, front end developers which is currently kind of like the most frequent front-end technology. Let's move on to some other roles, not development roles. IT, it's not just development roles. Uh, senior application security engineer. Yeah, With these roles, as you can see, for example, right here from uh, Asta Sarukite from Ox... Uh, Ox sorry, uh, I may be... It's not probably Oxlab, so I, I think I have it there from the last session. Uh, so, but definitely it should be role for Warsaw, for Berlin, for Vilnius in Lithuania. But when we look through these, uh, through the job description, it should be some person in application security engineer background, but there are not so many keywords, like hard keywords, like, like Python, etc., cetera, uh, which I could stick with other than, for example, experience with uh, different IOS, uh, with different OS like Linux, Android, iOS, Mac OS, etc. Yeah. Uh, so in general, of course, we can be looking for. I can skip, for example, into the paid version of LinkedIn in this case, and we can be looking in general for security 
engineer. So we can make it kind of like title oriented role. I will get there the current ones. And of course, uh, let's say there was Warsaw and other, I will put there Warsaw metropolitan area and we have 343 results. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I would be playing more uh, with the things like um, cybersecurity, yeah, because for example, security, but cybersecurity, it can be one word uh, altogether as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, so you should use that as well. So, of course, uh, we could expand that that we have a security engineer or cyber security engineer, for example, like that. We have something more, as you can see, we have a few more. Yeah. Um, so th that could be like that. Of course, there are more, uh, more security roles, like for example, pen tester, yeah, which means penetration tester. Uh, IT security manager, yeah, for example, from Yulia Dimchenko from Mintos from Latvia, and pen tester from Marta from DB Schenker in Poland. Um, from my experience, these roles are easy to find with the certifications yeah because the it security um sometimes it's really like um let's say guidelines oriented like protocol oriented and uh, they use these different uh certifications so for example in the case of a general cyber security knowledge it's ci ssp yeah so let's try to put their ci ssp in uh in warsaw and as you can see, we have actually more results in the same location. We got 370. Now we got 569 with the CI SSP certification. Yeah. As you can see, for example, here we have CI SSP and we have some more. Those might be probably uh, also uh, cybersecurity certifications. Here, this is a nice list of cybersecurity certifications. CI SSP. Uh, certification Information Security Auditor, cert uh, Certified Information Security Manager, and other, yeah, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So here, without, for example, Security Plus, uh, without any knowledge or without any of, like, Googling security certification, et cetera, uh, you can actually easily get this list just uh, based on this search and the great thing is that when you know what CI SSP is, which is already quite advanced, a security, cyber security certification, it ultimately ultimately saying something about background of these people. Yeah. And they would be in general uh, probably uh, ready for this role in this case. Penetration tester, it's more specific. That's the person which is more hands-on with different tools like, for example, Nmap, Nmap. Uh, so you can also try, for example, to do the search like Nmap. Let's just try it. And as you can see, 137 people use Nmap and just based on their title, cybersecurity analyst, platform security engineer, cybersecurity analyst, threat prevention and cloud security, etc., etc. All the all, all the security people we got here, and I just use Nmap. Just one simple tool, which is known preferably between people in IT security. Yeah? So that's why it's important even to ask your hiring managers, like what certification these people might have, what tools uh, these people uh, might use, for example. As you can see in the description, there is none. But in reality, of course, there are these tools. Uh, they are there. And those hiring managers can actually answer these questions for you. When we move to things like uh, another group, QA automation engineer, test automation developer from URI Sedlak, Orange from Slovakia, or tester in general. Uh, these roles might be searched when I'm back, for example, in the non-paid version of LinkedIn. I would search them firstly, probably based on title. Yeah, uh, because tester, imagine like tester, testing the software. Developer is doing something and tester is testing his work. Um, 
which can be like manual work or as you can see test automation it can be like automated work but uh not necessarily they might be some like hardcore tools behind that yeah it can be on the basis that the person really uh really clicks uh in the in the app uh if if it works or not yeah so it makes sense rather than going through uh, over keywords going over title so in the title you would probably you would need to uncover all the ways how to specify tester so it would be probably tester definitely not software tester yeah software tester is correct but it's not exhaustive because quite a lot of people use just tester so i would use tester uh those people might be like verification engineer we got with with glenn from nvidia verification engineer for the asic but verification engineer is used in testing of software as well but because it can be verification engineer verification expert verification specialist verification whatever i will use just verification yeah maybe validation maybe qa maybe quality assurance yeah. As you can see, I use nothing like engineer, specialist, etc. Because it would be a huge search. In this, uh, with this, I will cover all of that. If I want to exclude something like UA manager, I can do, for example, this. Yeah. And then when I have the search result, I can play with that uh, over. Of course, I need some. Uh, for example, let's put the Romania when we got the. Romania in the roles based on your input. So let me put the Romania. I got 16,000, yeah, which is quite a lot. So here I would apply some of the methodologies I already mentioned. Yeah, maybe there is some kind of preferable tool, scripting language, maybe there is something there. Yeah, but usually with the testers, there is, for example, preferable language Python, but we cannot use Python to actually locate uh, testers yeah because python is mostly used by the developers so but as a secondary secondary parameter the primary is the title which we use right here and as a secondary parameter we can we can use it if if we want testers who might have uh, knowledge of python some testers are testing web apps some uh, testers are testing server client uh, applications so all of these things can be used here, including the experience from here or some specific companies, for example. So there is always a way how to break down some huge number like 16,000 to smaller chunks, which we would start with as a primary option. Let me just put here Python. And as you can see, we got divided by 10. From 16,000, we got uh, 1,600. Okay, anyway, this would be probably the primary search, title search, but for testers, you can also use uh, certifications. To be honest, I don't know from top of my head, testing certification, like ICTQ, something like that here. Yeah, ICTQB, yeah, for example, it's probably the most famous uh, certification for testers. Yeah, so definitely, it would be a legit search to do this, but of course you need to get rid of the, you need to get rid of this. Otherwise it would be doubling the same parameter. Yeah, because ICTQB means the person is tester. So we don't have to force him to be tester by the role. So as you can see, still quite a lot of people, 8,600 people having ICTQB in Romania perfect list of verified testers. Another thing might be with automation developers for the automation of things, they use some kind of tools like maybe Selenium. Yeah? Selenium is one of the tools, one of the softwares which you can use for automating tests. As you can see, the first person, I put there just Selenium, nothing else. Selenium Romania. And the first person is actually software engineer, Robert Bosch, but in the past, Selenium tester, actually. Yeah, so he's skilled in uh, testing. 
automation selenium etc learning python selenium automation yeah as i said like python is usually connected with testers because python is usually connected with automation of the test so one role tester but three different searches based on title based on certifications based on tools yeah in this case all right uh I will not be, because we are running out of time, uh, I will not be probably digging uh, so deep into, into these, but uh, Linux system administrator, thank you, Emma uh, from Kaunas, from Lithuania, actually. Marketa Viskočová also sent us Linux system engineer. Uh, Oana Augusta from NTT Data Romania, a Linux with German, German language. That might be interesting. And uh, also Oana Augusta Prikop from NTT Data Romania, with system engineer, yeah. Uh, here again, the important thing is to know what's more important. So when we have Linux, a lot of people will use not only Linux, but they will use some specific distribution, Linux distribution. Linux is a general name. It's like when I say Windows, do you use Windows? Yes, I use Windows, but which Windows? Windows. 10 or Windows 11 or Windows 95, that's the Windows I started with uh, back then. It's same with Linux. What Linux do you use? Yes, I use Linux, but which Linux do you use? Red Hat Enterprise Linux or Ubuntu or Slackware or Debian or many other like hundreds of other distributions. Uh, Unix, Unix is actually not under Linux, but above Linux. Yeah, Unix, it's a family of Unix systems. Underneath you have Linux systems and, for example, Mac OS. Mac OS, if you use Mac, it's Unix-based system. So it's like uh, it's a sibling to to Linux. Yeah, Unix, Mac OS, Linux. They are siblings. So for Linux, I would use search not just Linux, but I would use Linux, Unix, sometimes just Nix, and I would use things like Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is uh, which is in abbreviation. RHCE, RHCE, uh, or Debian, or any other Linux distribution. So Linux will be actually quite a large search to cover. If I cover a system administrator, I would definitely, uh, based on title, I would definitely use things like system administrator, system admin. Actually, I would use just admin, because if you use admin in title and keywords like Linux, it's clear that it will not be HR admin, right? It's clear already, yeah? So you are avoiding false positives anyway by putting there, for example, Linux. So you can put there just admin because a lot of people will be admin or administrator, not system administrator, just administrator, administrator only. Sysadmin altogether, sysadmin. Uh, people like uh, support, yeah? first line of support, second line of support, hotline, uh, maybe some kind of... Uh, uh, customer care, yeah, they are sometimes people of this sort as well. All right, and with the system engineer here, it would be just nice to have, of course, you can put there some things like Nginx, uh, and again, like Docker, Kubernetes. You can see that now the IT is really, that there are a lot of shared things, yeah, that it's not like here is a developer, and here is tester, and here is Linux administrator, and they use totally different tools, each of these groups. Now it's a little bit mixed and it's clear with things like stuff, site relevant engineer, for example, uh, and things like site relevant engineer from Raluca, from Bosch, from Riga, from Latvia. Actually, this was sent from Anthology from Brno, from Kateřina Havlová. And definitely things like DevOps. It's already in the name development operations. It's, it's merged, yeah? Uh, all together from Aurelia uh, Bavayan from Eneba from Lithuania. And as you can see, based on the, on the description, it's still the same things like AWS cloud, uh, Terraform on AWS, CI, CD, which means uh, continuous integration, continuous development. Um, when we have here the description of the site relevant engineer, we have actively practicing DevOps 
So DevOps, it's not in the name, but it's somewhere in the description. And again, we have CI, CD, we have Terraforms here, uh, we have AWS here. So it's, it's, it's kind of people who are on the brink of software development, but on the brink of uh, infrastructure, which means uh, servers and, and other things which you need to run the application. Yeah, it's not just to do the software, but you need some kind of servers, maybe load balancers. Uh, you need to somehow distribute it. Uh, so for example, this I, I, uh, IAACC means infrastructure as a code, actually. And again, Docker, Kubernetes. Yeah? How many times we saw Docker and Kubernetes today throughout different roles? Yeah? So this is, these roles like DevOps uh, will be probably for you, I would say the most difficult because when we, you see these technology we use, yeah? AWS, Docker, Kubernetes, Helm, Elasticsearch, uh, MongoDB, a lot of things. Yeah? And based on the methodology I explained today, it will be difficult, more difficult, difficult for you to grasp what's more important, what's not important at all, etc. cetera. With a site reliability engineer and DevOps, also probably the first thing I would start with would be the title. Yeah? Simply look for DevOps. But in the second search, because DevOps, it's still kind of, it's trendy thing, but still quite new. And a lot of people doing DevOps jobs, uh, job uh, might not be called DevOps. When I was doing software engineering back in 2006, 7, 9 to 10 or 11, uh, 2011, uh, we didn't call it DevOps back then. Yeah, We got different kind of uh, configuration engineer. We call that, for example, configuration engineer. So I, I would be looking, for example, for configuration engineers as well. But definitely in the second phase, I would be looking for some of these tools mentioned here or things like CI, CD, for example. And... Uh, as you can see, again, like PHP, Golang. But PHP and Golang, we already saw for the role PHP developer with uh, Golang as a secondary, a secondary language. So we cannot use it as only this. We cannot use it as a main keyword for DevOps yeah? because preferably you will get programmers. So definitely these are uh, most demanding. I will probably do... Uh, live IT sourcing lab, maybe just for DevOps, maybe just DevOps and, and site relevant engineers and uh, roles like that because it's complicated, more complicated that when we say Java developer. Even if, as you saw with Java developer, you can, you can make quite a lot of mistakes as well. Bojan Markov from uh, Kodet from Poland, uh, from actually, I think uh, Bojan is from Bulgaria, working in Poland, uh, send us DevOps as well. And uh, Adelina Munteanu, uh, again from Romania, Romania, World Semester from us, uh, also send us DevOps engineer with experience with Asia. Of course, there are many other roles. Yeah, you send us things like SAP BI, embedded developers, some roles in telecoms, UX UI. Yeah, there definitely you can, if you are looking for UX UI, you should try things like Dribble, uh, Behance, yeah, some Something like on GitHub, we go for developers. On Stack Overflow, we go for any IT specific role, including DevOps. For UX UI, I would be going, for example, also to Dribble and Behance, for example. Technical writer, yeah, of course, that's, that's the role in IT as well. Cloud data engineer, yeah, which might be kind of similar to these DevOps. I will maybe make like one family of roles like DevOps, Cloud Engineer, Site Reliability Engineer and do it uh, doing something there on its own. All right, I, I think time is up. I think we are actually over. So maybe I will just uh, say again that if you want some more content, of course, you can uh, go to uh, our website, um, recruitment.academy, you will find some other webinars there, the recordings of past webinars there, uh, and some other things. You can check my profile. You can sign up to my newsletter if you want. I'm trying to elaborate more on some uh, other things than just this, like practical knowledge, which you see right here. 
it's still practical, that's my footprint, but it's maybe challenging more the status quo of talent sourcing as we know it today. So uh, I'm now preparing some new articles with, uh, with for example, cloning of, defin- like, like literally cloning of people and cloning of, of, of voice, for example. If you want something like a Recruitment Academy Certified Sourcer, it's here as well. So you can sign up for the next round. Uh, up to uh, seven speakers there, different topics, including talent sourcing, including things which you saw right here. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, just, again, quickly check the comments if there is something more. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, we will, be, we will be sharing the recording or the recording will be automatic, but people who sign up, and still, you can sign up uh, on recruitment.academy if you want to make sure that you will get uh, the recording and the presentation and these things. Uh, Angelica, uh, I don't know if Angelica is still here. Uh, what do you do when you find a candidate on GitHub, but they use only a nickname? How to find contacts of that person? Actually, there are uh, more ways how to do that. Uh, definitely, you can use... OSINT things like if you open, for example, OSINTframework.com, uh, if you click on usernames, if you click on username search engines, there is a bunch of uh, username services where I think my favorite is this one, instant username search. And when you put it here, yeah, you put there the nickname, it will tell you uh, actually which services are already occupied uh, by this nickname. And you can open them and if you find there is GitHub as well, but that would be your guy there because here you have the GitHub. If I click here on the GitHub, uh, you get to my GitHub actually right here. Yeah. Um, but we might say that maybe under Twitter, it will be me as well. And it's me. Yeah. So you can either use this or uh, there are some ways actually uh, how to uncover uh, email addresses. So you can uncover email address. There are more ways how to do that on GitHub. And from the email address, of course, oftentimes you can see name and surname. Yeah. Uh, if you are interested more in this, of course, for example, in other courses, uh, you will find on our website. Uh, I'm actually going through that. Uh, someone, uh, I don't know, uh, I, I cannot see the name, uh, how to search on Stack Overflow. Actually, Stack Overflow is X-ray, you can X-ray search it in the same way as, not in the same way as GitHub, but using Google. So I can go, for example, like this. Stackoverflow.com slash users. Stack Overflow is actually easier because, for example, users, I will open, for example, this one. Uh, users actually got Stack Overflow slash users. So I can use slash users as the base for the search. In Python Brno, uh, in this case, what I what I did before, and I got the users. So that's one of the ways how to simply search through Stack Overflow. Da da da. Uh, Glenn actually got some other comments. Do do do. All right, all right. So I think I think that's it. Uh, can find. ITO, Mohamed, I'm not actually sure what exactly you mean, but if you want, you can send me a message. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer Novak. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as I said, if you have any other questions, comments, anything like that, skip on my um, LinkedIn profile. There is the QR code. You can use it as well, but you will find me easily by by the name and uh, hopefully see you soon next time if you have some problems with some tools and something what i mentioned here uh, definitely send me a message uh, i will uh, actually reply to everyone so i think from the comment section i think that's all and see you next time and good luck with sourcing <laughs>